Most of you know Dr. Janetsky as we've been fortunate to have him here speak at our economic breakfast each year. He went on to get his doctorate from NYU and teach at the University of Chicago's Graduate School of Business. He's also written four books. Uh, the latest, of course, is the one that we're providing today, Classical Economic Principles and the Wealth of Nations. He spent a portion of his career working as economist at the Harris Bank in Chicago. He has since provided advice to his clients through his own economic and financial consulting firm. And there are really only two views on how the economy works. Uh, classical economic principles and something called Keynesian economic principles. These two views are exactly opposed to each other. They're diametrically opposed. They have different assumptions, different conclusions. Given those different conclusions, one view is clearly right, the other is clearly wrong. And if you end up choosing the wrong explanation for how the economy works and you base policies on it, you're going to have destructive policies. And if you choose the right explanation for how the economy works, you pursue po policies along that line, you're going to have a constructive economy. So basically, the classical economic principles are consistent with liberty and freedom. And the fascinating thing to me is when you look at this country in the past or any other country around the world, whatever government policies have moved in the direction of these principles, we have seen improved economic conditions. And whenever you've moved away from these particular policies, policies that give people liberty and freedom, we have disappointing economic conditions. Some people believe, Keynesian economics, that when government spends all this money, it helps to stimulate activity. The classical argument is, no, it doesn't. All you're redoing is you are replacing individual private spending with public spending, and that has had a tendency, whenever it's been tried, to weaken economic activity. I heard recently on the news that uh, college loan debt that you just mentioned was going to exceed a trillion dollars and overtake credit card debt. Do you think that will have any impact on the U.S. national economy and, and anything else in yeah. our kids' future? It's, it's characteristic of a society that gears policies toward debt. Government tells us by the way it acts that going into debt is great. We can go into debt for just about anything. We can borrow money from China. There's an interesting skit, I think it was on Saturday Night Live or, or one of those, where one of the actors was imitating uh, Chairman Hu in China. And President Obama was calling to try and borrow some money. And he says, hi, Hu. And Hu said, well, hello, Obama. Uh, what's up? He said, well, you know, I need to borrow another trillion dollars from you. And who says, oh, no problem, we have plenty of money, uh, we have plenty of dollars here. Uh, what do you want to use it for? He said, well, we want to pay people not to work. <laughs> you know, there, there's, there's, there's a culture here that we, we have kind of ingrained in people. Uh, the government has made it really attractive to get student loans. One of the saddest things I heard was President Obama's first State of the Union speech, because I happened to be listening to it with my granddaughter, one of my granddaughters, who's six years old. And he said, and another thing I'm going to give you, I am going to give you a college education, and you won't have to pay for it. And her ears pierced up. Six-year-old little girl. I'm not going to have to pay for my college education? <laughs> and I said, turn the TV off. These are... These these are not the lessons we want to try and teach the kids. So, frankly, that's, that's why I, really why I wrote the book, Classical Economic Principles. It's designed to be an easy read. I've had it read by high school kids who said, yeah, I understood all of this. Matter of fact, I had my grandson, who was 14, read the drafts of it. And, and I said, okay, anything in there give you any trouble. You know, it's 100 pages, very thin book, easy to carry home. And he said, uh, no, he said, very easy, I understood everything. He said, you're just a bit too wordy. <laughs>